Hi again, Swift here with Bailey Wiki, and in this part we'll be talking about tokens in 3D, how they work, what methods you can use to get the best results, and a few places you can look if you're interested in getting 3D tokens for your players or monsters. So most of the tokens you'll be using at the moment will be something like this, a piece of full character art like so, or a more stylized token like this one on the right. Some DMs use top-down art of characters too, but overall it's the same concept. So let's see what happens if we just enable the 3D view. So by default, 3D Canvas will automatically try and turn whatever our a token has into a standee, a 3D version of one of those cardboard standee tokens you can get for actual tabletop. Generally speaking, it works well, though it has a few quirks we'll go over. First of all, it works best with full height side-on art of your characters, like this one here. It'll turn things like this token into a standee, but this might not be the kind of style you're going for. Secondly, it can sometimes have trouble depending on the silhouette of a character. If we look closely at this one, for instance, we can see that it's tried to bridge the gap here between the sword and the head, but it's left a gap underneath it. You might get similar glitches depending on the art you're using, but I found that putting a two or three pixel white border around the edge of a piece of art like this makes it much more reliable. Let me just copy this token, I'll show you what I mean. If I replace the token, There we go. As you can see here, that makes things a little cleaner. So what I did with this is I took this picture here into GIMP, in my case, and then just added a two pixel white border around the entire thing. And then that just makes 3D Canvas have a bit of an easier time making these standees for it. So that's the default for what 3D Canvas does, though there are also two other 2D token styles you can use. If you go into the token configuration, into the 3D tab and into the Advanced tab, you can find 2D token style at the bottom. By default, it'll just set it to the global setting, which you can set in the module settings. But if we look at this drop down here, we can see flat face camera, extruded standing up, which is what it is right now, and coin top down. So let's have a quick look at the flat version. And the flat version of a token is always going to be facing the camera because it is just the 2D image projected into 3D. It can look pretty good depending on the exact token you've got and, you know, the style that you're going for. Though it has some issues with very small details, like for example, the hilt of this sword is very narrow, so if you zoom out, it starts becoming really hard to see. But at a certain distance, details like that become invisible anyway. The third token style is coin top down, and this is ideal for circular tokens like this one. If we go into the token configuration and set this to coin top down and then that puts the token art image on top of a coin shaped object. Worth known, as you can tell, um, it does not like transparent backgrounds around tokens. So what I've done with this is I've made a version of this token with a black background, which it's much more happier with, and then that is a much more abstract kind of stylized version of a token. So the next thing to look at would be base style. If we go into settings and then into configure settings and then into 3D canvas global settings, we get some settings for configuring the module as a whole. And one of these sections is the base. And this refers to the base of tokens as they appear on the map. Currently, as you can see, it's set to ring simple, which is a base style I quite like just for being relatively understated, but still visible. It'll do things like highlight when someone's turn has come up in combat and that sort of thing but it's not too intrusive. But if we have a look at the dropdown here, there are a whole bunch of options for different base styles. Let's have a quick look at a couple of them, like for example, uh, Sharp is a very classic style. The Sharp style of base is a very sort of classic tabletop style with sharp edges, hence the name. It's worth noting that with bases, if you use the coin style tokens, then those will obviously be on a base as well. So to remove that, you can open up the token configuration in the 3D settings, and in advanced, you can click disable base. And what that'll do is it'll put the token right on the floor. And then while we're looking at token bases, another style is the shaped ones. Like hex, for example, is a good style if you're playing something like Battletech or Lancer. It's the same idea, just with a hexagonal base, as you can see here. Got a little bit of taper to it textured top, flat edges, and you can switch between those at any time of course. So let's switch on back to the hollow ring style, and there we are. 
So that's how 2D tokens interact with the 3D view and a few ways to tweak them to your liking. So let's have a look at setting up 3D tokens. There are a bunch of ways to do this, generally boiling down to three categories relating to three of these buttons in the basic section of the 3D settings, the 3D model. And these buttons over to the right here are different ways to select your token. So let's start with the first one, which is titled Token Browser. If you click on this, this opens up a repository of painted minis made by the community for 3D Canvas, and is absolutely ideal for finding NPCs or monsters. There's currently over a thousand of them available, and it's searchable. So say if we just type in pirates, we get a few results here, and let's just select the pirate captain set. Close this, update the token. And then that switches that over to the 3D model. The token browser is very quick and is definitely the easiest option, though of course the minis aren't custom, so they might not be ideal for players unless you're running a specific kind of one shot or something. The second easiest method is the Hero Forge browser. So the Hero Forge browser requires the 3D portraits module and of course also requires that you have some minis on the Hero Forge website. The way to get this working, if you go into settings and then go into the 3D portrait settings, there's a box here for your Hero Forge authentication key, which you can get from their website. And then if you've got that in there, then when you click on the Hero Forge button, you'll get this window here, which will show all the various minis you have access to. And then the way to use this is to just pick a mini, click select file, and there you go. That's a custom Hero Forge mini imported into 3D Canvas with one click. You can also put the authentication keys from several accounts into 3D portraits, separated by commas. So if your player has a mini they really want to use, then you can put that in there and use it. The main downsides with this method are, of course, that you need to buy the minis from Hero Forge, and that also you're limited to Hero Forge's art style because it's from their website. So that might not be to your tastes. The third main option is, of course, to import your own minis. So the possibilities for this one are pretty much endless, seeing as all it needs to be is any 3D model in the GLB format and it'll work as a token in 3D Canvas. So to give you an example, if I select from my example tokens here and then grab this token that I'm using for something completely unrelated to these videos. So I think that kind of illustrates the point quite well that the token can be literally anything. So I'm sure some of you already have some ideas for where you could find some minis and import them into 3D Canvas, but otherwise the question is where do you get them? There's obviously the make them yourself approach, but that requires a fair amount of expertise and essentially already being a 3D artist. There's the commission an artist approach, but custom 3D minis aren't all that mainstream yet, so that might be quite expensive. The main way that I've been acquiring custom minis is via 3D printing websites. There's already quite a large collection of artists and companies making minis intended for 3D printing out there, and there's even sites like Eldritch Foundry, uh, which is sort of similar to Hero Forge, but with a less stylized art style, but they're currently limited to 3D printing STL files. Converting STL files for use in 3D Canvas is actually relatively straightforward. The downside of those is that they are unpainted. However, painting minis, it turns out, is actually a lot of fun. A little while back, I did a couple of tutorial videos on how to convert and paint 3D minis with Gerbo, who is a member of the community that does a lot of mini painting for the uh, Painted Mini Compendium. And during the video, he painted up this Gunslinger mini here. This was quite a quick paint job just for the purposes of a tutorial video, so the more time you put into it, the better results you can get. I'll put a link to the videos down below. Gerbo uses Substance Painter, which can be quite expensive to obtain, but I also go over how to paint minis in Blender, which is a free tool. So, we've covered the main options available for minis in the 3D view, using traditional 2D art or getting a hold of 3D minis, and how these minis look in 3D canvas. The last thing I'd like to go over are a few options you'll probably want to use before too long which is the scale setting and a very quick look at shaders. So if we scoot over here, I've got a set of minis that I got from Hero Forge that I was using for uh, some B-roll. When you first import a mini into 3D Canvas, it's going to make its best guess at how large the model should be. Sometimes it gets it wrong though. If you've got a token who is a halfling or a gnome, then they often look too tall. Or if you've got a token like this one here who is holding very tall objects like banners or weapons, they can be scaled too small. So the way to fix that is to 
you go into the configuration, in the basic setting, there is scale. So the scale setting doesn't impact how many spaces a token takes up or anything. It doesn't interact with the rules at all. It's purely a visual change to make the token look more correct. For this token here, let's set it to say 1.25 and update the token. And that's looking closer to the proper height for that token, I think. You can get as precise as you want to, of course. Fiddle with the scale until everyone is perfectly accurate to how high they should be. But generally speaking, you'll probably want to be aiming somewhere between 0.75 and 1.25. The last thing to take a quick look at is shaders. So if we take this token here, for example, if you go into the effects section of a token configuration, there's this configure shaders button. And if you click on that, that'll bring up the shaders configuration window. There's a whole bunch of them in here, definitely enough to make a whole video about them. So for right now, I'm just letting you guys know about the window and showing the idle shader, which is the first one on the list here. So let's enable it for this token, and you can probably see what it's doing. The effects are quite subtle, but it just gives tokens a bit of faint movement to make them seem more alive. If I just fiddle with the settings a bit, like say, set the anchor to around 0.2, turn the intensity way down, increase the speed a little bit, then that may be better illustrates its kind of intended use. Essentially what it's doing is moving the token up and down slowly to make it look a bit more lifelike, sort of like it's breathing or shifting its feet. In this case, most of the settings are pretty self-explanatory. Speed is how fast it moves, direction is what direction it moves in, intensity is how far it moves. Anchor is probably less self-explanatory. That dictates where the moving stops, starting at zero at the bottom of the model and one at the top. So if I set this to zero, it means the entire model moves, which probably doesn't look right. But if you set it all the way up, then just the very top of the model will move, though it's a bit harder to see. If I set the intensity way, way up, you can probably see more what I'm talking about. So if you wanted just the upper body of the model to move and for the legs to remain still, you might set the anchor to 0.5 or so, and then tweak the intensity as you like. So that's the idle shader, and just a brief look at the shaders available for tokens in 3D Canvas. And that is a basic overview of tokens in general. In the next part of this series, we'll be looking at fully 3D scenes, the different types you might use, where to find them, and the basics of how to create them. For now though, I hope this video has been useful. As ever, questions, comments, and so on are more than welcome down below or in our Discord, and I'll see you in the next one.